Now we're about to begin. So I present uh, Justin with a talk on Ansible. Oh, sorry, uh, pardon my delay. A few technical uh, details I had to work out. So um, my name's Justin Wilson. You know, I want to speak about Ansible. I want this talk to be for all technical levels. So, you know, if you're not sure about um, a particular concept or detail, please let me know. I want this to be interactive, ask questions as we go along. You know, I want to be able to explain this uh, this tool in a way, you know, where everyone can get it, okay? So that's what I'm aiming for. I want everyone to go away with some, uh, you know, some value, some knowledge. So yeah, please um, raise your hand if you have uh, any questions, if something's not clear and um, I'll, do my best to answer it. Okay, so Ansible. Ansible is um, an IT automation tool, uh, a configuration management and also a configuration management tool. Um, yeah, it's uh, one of the major, you know, architectural design principles uh, that Ansible um, uses is uh, Simplicity. So you know they want it to be basic. They want it to be intuitive. So <clears throat> I'll show you. Okay. So what is Ansible? Okay. Okay. So as I was saying, Ansible is a, a simple automation tool. Okay. So yeah, one of the. Uh, I'll show you in the next, uh, you know, slide or so why it's simple. Um, a high-level view. It uses, uh, it executes remote commands. Uh, well, it executes commands on a remote host. Okay, so I've got a computer here, and uh, I've got a server in uh, Norway, and um, yeah, I tell it what to do. I guess. Okay. Um, one of the advantages of Ansible uh, compared to other similar uh, automation tools is um, Ansible is agentless, which means you don't it do, it doesn't require any um, extra software to be installed on the managed host. So uh, there are hosts. Uh, there are other automation tools such as um, Puppet and Chef where it requires. Uh, that, you know, different kind of tools, but it requires that you install extra software on, on, on the servers that you're managing, yeah? Okay, so one, one big advantage of uh, Ansible is it doesn't require that. All it requires is OpenSSH and uh, Python, which is every distribution. What's, yeah. what's SSH? Okay, sure. Yeah, thanks. Uh, okay, so historically, you know, um, you seen the matrix, right? You know, you, we've got the terminal. Okay, so oh, I just what the no, 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 that's fine. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, so the question was, uh, what what does SSH stand for? So it's a secure shell. Now, what why it says uh, secure is historically we used to use. So you you, you know um, you know the terminal, right? Uh, you know matrix. You, you see the he's on the screen like the when you type command you know, command prompt or PowerShell if you're coming from the Windows but basically before they had graphical user interfaces that they, they had a terminal right and that was the only way to interface with computers okay so they didn't have a uh, you know a mouse and display the only way you could communicate with computers was uh, you know via commands uh, an interactive prompt so. You know, you see old older computers. Um, they were at the keyboard. You know, the old green text on the black, the black background. You know, it's, it, so that's just it's good. So we, you know, we get the nomenclature right, and everyone understands when I say certain terms. Uh, um, so yeah, historically that that was a way. Now, now you could do that remotely. Okay, so um, before it was insecure, as in commands that you would type on one computer, okay, you, you, you could send it to another computer, 
okay? And historically, there was sent in clear text, uh, if someone had enough skills to listen or get hold of that traffic, and if it was sensitive information, even passwords would be sent in clear text, you know, obviously, um, they could take over your host or your machine, your computer, and do with it what they will, you know? So, but it's secure SSH, you know, particularly open SSH in particular is a secure shell. Now, shell is the terminal that you type the commands in, secure because it's encrypted. And it's, it's been, uh, open SSH has been vetted, you know, it's just, it's very, it's a very mature uh, uh, project and it, it's, I'm pretty sure you can't, it's, um, you, you can't break it, like, it, yeah. Yeah, 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 look at that. yeah, but yeah, but uh, you know, the way they define it, it uses RSA a keys, you know, which I'm picking a number, it's like a million years to crack the keys, it'll take a million computer years or something similar to that to actually, it might be 200,000, but it's just, that's how they say it's infeasible, as in for you to, uh, you know, brute force, I know, as in brute force is password you just try a b c d and then you keep on going through the dictionary you know it's it's infeasible to do it with ssh so it's totally secure yeah it, it's um very common it's it's a very common management tool uh especially you know in regards to linux so um open ssh is actually a originally a bsd project but yes a talk from another but, but are you clear um what a secure shell is like a terminal yeah i just assume I would no no that's exactly so that's what we're here said, for as soon as you said secure shell mm -hmm. exactly what oh, okay beautiful it's beautiful just yeah that's yeah. fine it, well i encourage anyone if you know there's different nomenclatures there's different terms so yeah, yeah please don't be sure to ask if, if there's something that's unclear okay okay so yeah Basically, it, so this tool, Ansible, uses SSH, all, all you know, as the transport mechanism. Now, all SSH is sending and receiving text over over a secure channel. Yeah, so that that's why it's used, and it is, it is secure, very secure. Now, as I said, it's agentless. It only requires SSH and Python. Okay, which is uh, standard on, I don't know any. Um, Linux distributions that don't have that already installed. So, who was that? <laughs> Debbie? No? Uh, possibly, there might be some, you know, I mean, there's hundreds of distros, but yeah, it, generally you find that uh, those packages are, are installed, okay? Okay. Um, now, the way you configure Ansible is via text files. I and I is just simple key value pairs. So you have uh, a key and a value, a key and a value, okay? And YAML, which is um, a superset of JSON, you know, JavaScript uh, object notation. So essentially all that means is it's human readable, okay? So it's human readable. You can, you can open up one of these files and you can read it, yeah? Yeah, well, even better, even simpler than a spreadsheet. Yeah, it's, you can see what it means, you know, as opposed to XML. Okay, as opposed to, I've got to turn the screen tape off. Okay. You've got to say, I love the, what the acronym for stands for. Yeah, yeah, another um, markup language. Or... Oh, yeah, yeah, I heard a few iterations, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, so, sorry, uh, my last point there is um, so the modules in Ansible are written in Python. So for you developers here who are, you know, it's, it, Python is, you know, very, in, you know, it's known for being an intuitive programming language and uh, a great uh, language of choice, if you, you know, for your first language. Okay? Okay. So everyone understands what Ansible does and the purpose of Ansible? Not quite. No. Let, let me get back to uh, a couple of slides and then we'll see how we go. Okay? Okay. So... Oh, actually, let me go back. So basically, to summarize, what Ansible does is it allows me to type command or, you know, to, it allows me to say, I want this computer, 
over there, you know, you could have a hundred or a thousand servers, you know, in the data, whatever, but you can, you can have one computer, you can have 10 computers, you can have a thousand computers, but it allows you to manage them, you know, in, in a more efficient way, in a scalable way. Yeah. So you can, you know, yeah, it allows you, it automates that the management of, uh, well, machines, yeah, your, your infrastructure, okay? What's the difference running your script on over the site? Okay, so the question was, why would you use uh, uh, Ansible as opposed to just normally um, using SSH? But, um, a yeah, actually, I'm going to get into that in a, in a slide or two. I I've got a great example. So, yeah, okay. <coughs> Okay, so, yeah, so it allows us to manage, I mean, mind you, it's not Linux host, it could be Windows host, BSD hosts, any computer that you can install Python and SSH, you can manage those hosts, yeah? So it's vendor, vendor agnostic, okay? Now, how? We'll just ease into it, you know, try and uh, get a, a high level view and then try and drill down to the mechanics so yeah so just so we're all on the same page here i'm going to um explain the concept of how how we how we execute commands on a remote host okay so this should be good value okay so much people here not familiar with ssh i mean i'm guessing I'm just going to assume anyway. So, as I was explaining before, SSH, this, so you've got the terminal. Let me just see if I can just get a terminal up here. Sorry. Okay, actually, perfect presentation. There's a terminal. Okay. <laughs> for, 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 okay, so, um, yeah. You type commands in, you know. You could tell the computer what to do, okay. But yeah, plenty of time for that. Okay, so that's the terminal. Everyone's clear what a terminal is. It's how you interact with a computer if you don't have a mouse, a graphical display, yeah. Okay, so SSH. I want to talk about SSH. How SSH works. Um, yeah, and it's, it's a great tool. You know, I've, I've often heard uh, people refer to Open SSH as the Swiss Army knife. You know, because you can actually mount, I mean, mount file systems. As in, you, if I have a host here, I've got a another computer there. Doesn't matter here, Sydney, uh, Zimbabwe, or you know, Antarctica. It, it's I, I can you know I can I can speak to that computer like it's here now yeah now if that computer's got SSH you know if it's the right configuration if they have a directory on the computer on a folder you can you can you can mount you you can you could make you could share that like um you know on, on computers how you you click on network but you can access the computers. What I'm trying to say, you know. <laughs> okay, you could, and, and not only that, you can, you can even uh, with a graphical display, you can tunnel that. So remember, SSH is, is like a transport. So it creates a, a secure tunnel. You could, you know, like the this display. You can watch a movie in Zimbabwe here. You know, so anything is it, a transport mechanism. It's a pipe. Okay. Now, this is how. So this is a quick uh, overview about SSH, secure shell. Okay. The, generally, this is this is how you would uh, use SSH, the SSH command. So it, that's the SSH command. You know. Um, now you would do SSH user, as in me, your username. Me will be Justin. Okay. And then at, just like an email, Ubuntu. It could be Ubuntu, whatever the name of the host. It could be it could be an IP address, it could be a DNS name, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Um and then oh, so this is the interesting part. So 
for example, where am I? Hey, hey. Okay. No, I can't edit. Okay, so let's pretend this this doesn't exist, okay? So if I was to type SSH at Ubuntu or SSH at 192.168.0.1 or SSH at Windows host or whatever, okay? Uh, what what would happen? It would open up uh, a terminal on my local on my local machine. But it looks like I'm typing on my, so I'll show you. Quick example. Well, I have to cater for everyone. You know, I, I, you know, I can't just make presumptions steam ahead. I, I will make this quick, you know, but I want everyone to get value from it. I understand, but, we, you know, not everyone is works in the IT arena. You know, it, it, it's going to be an extra five, ten minutes. Mm. Yeah, yeah, but not everyone knows what a remote so Yeah, yeah, up there. Just bear with me, okay? We'll get there. We'll get to the good stuff. We've got to eat the. We've got to eat our meat and vegetables. You know? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll show you. I'll get. Well, actually, it's my. You know, I'll, well, I'll show you. I'm going to show you. Um, actually, sorry. I'm going to show you now. Here, quick example of SSH. Okay, so. SSH Okay, now local host. That's the means this computer. Okay, so I'm SSHing that. Oh, have a local oh I see it. Mm. Okay. So that could be another computer. So see that at that part? I'm not on this computer anymore. I'm on another computer typing commands, yeah? Okay. So it, now, if we extend that, I'll log out. Okay, so uh, oh, sorry, excuse me. Font, is it? Yeah, that's what I do. Control Shift Plus, isn't it? But it's, I don't know why it's not doing it. Wait a minute. I'm just trying to zoom in a bit. Uh, yeah, Control Shift Plus. Yeah. But that only works in the uh, Yeah, it usually works, eh? Hey? I don't know what's no, happening. No, it's not in, uh, it works in Kubuntu, but not Okay. In the um, Sure. Um. Anyways, so basically, it says. So I'm typing, SSH username at remote host. Now everyone know you can execute commands without actually. Without actually, um, you know, starting a session. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna do the port here. Okay, so there, now I'm going to put a command, ls. ls is a command to list what files are in your directory, in the present directory. So instead of starting a session, that's just, it goes, it executes ls on the remote machine and then sends the feedback. So you have to imagine, send the, send the command there and then the output is coming to my local machine. Okay, so I'm, but I'm not actually in a session. Do you ever understand how to execute commands on a, on a remote host? Yeah? Very useful tool. Okay, so basically, let me just move this. Huh? Sorry. Well, I I use public key authentication. Yeah. So yeah. But um, yeah. So basically, you, you you can all see that. That's that's the structure of the command. Okay. Um. So yeah, any command you can type on your local host. You can append it to the end of the SSH command, and it will execute uh, on the remote host and send the output back to your local computer. Okay. Now, 
that's essentially what how Ansible works. Okay, it it, use, it, it um yeah it, it uh, executes commands on remote hosts. Okay, now a lot of people has been well known. People have been doing this for years. You know, executing commands on on a remote host, but um, the difference. Uh, the, the, the thing with Ansible, it extends that, you know, so someone, I, I could say, oh, instead of, um, you know, I could, <laughs> there are no environment variables, are you know, you, you could define variables, <laughs> you, you could define variables, <laughs> you, could, you could define variables, uh, I'm gonna, it's, it doesn't gonna take one sec, okay, okay, look, okay, okay, um, don't worry about it, just keep going. Yeah. yeah, but we have to understand, you know, it's... Uh... I think most people understand. Yeah. Okay. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so yeah. Variables allow us to... Okay. As long as you understand. As long as you understand, yeah, that's good. Okay. So basically, okay. Okay, so why is this relevant to Ansible? Okay, what Ansible does, it, it allows people that use this, you know, SSH tool to manage hosts. It, 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 uh, it, it's like, it gives it a well-defined structure. So I can use this variable and it means this. I can, so I can use this, I can say uh, A equals this host, B equals this host. <laughs> Sorry? On, on the previous page of the two file formats you mentioned. No, yeah, no, no, yeah, exactly. Well, it is, yeah, that's right. You define that, yeah, in, in um, text files like that, yeah. yeah. Okay? There's a number of ways you could define variables, but yeah, that's that's one of the ways. So that's where you're applying those variables you're applying to, to putting it in the file? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you can you, you can put it in files. There, there are actually a number of ways. You know, you could you could define them on the on a command line, but the, you know, at the end of the day, like, they're, they're defined. The in the file. Yeah. yeah, you could you know there are there are many options for defining which variables you want to use, but at the end of the day, all around the world, if you're an Ansible user, you know that these are options. Okay. Now, what what that what that allows us, you know, so. What that, what, what that allows us to do is swap scripts, okay? Swap different methods. It, it, um, it maximizes code reuse, like, you know, uh, yeah, code reuse and um, sharing, sharing code. So, and, and it reduces, you know, duplication of effort where, well, why, why should I spend a day or two working on some script when someone in um, America has already done it? You know, it allows us to share that and it just allows us to be more efficient. Yeah. So it allows us to, yeah, it allows us to, um, you know, share, share scripts using that format, like SSH, uh, um, yeah. Okay. So I've got a picture here. Yeah. So now we've, we've already uh, done it. So what Ansible actually does is Ansible, you know, through using SSH as a tunnel, so you can have all these hosts, yeah? And now Ansible al allows us to define one variable for all those hosts. So if we want to execute, if we want to execute um, a command on just these two hosts, sure, no problem. If we only want to do it on the Windows hosts, no, that's fine. If we want to execute, check something on all these hosts, yeah, no problem. Okay, that, that, gives, that gives you a good represent, you know, representation of how you know the mechanics of how it works. Yeah, so you have got the Ansible automation engine. Yeah. Any yep. categorize your servers. Yeah. And say to Ansible, I want to execute this command on all my Linux. Yeah. Or I want to execute this command on all my Windows. That's right. And you put that information in one of those files. That's right. In the, one of the YAML files. Yeah. So yeah, is uh, I'm giving it, you can go really complex into how how the, the the variables are defined, but basically, you know, as long as you understand, you know, it, the concepts of how it's doing it, how how you have a, 
a well-defined uh, format, you know, and a system in place for, you know, uh, this is what I call variables for hosts. Uh, now, I'll get into modules, but, yeah, so it allows us to do this more efficiently, okay? Now, how it really, how Ansible really performs tasks, okay? So, sorry, one second. Um, yeah. So in Ansible, there are files, okay? The standard files that, that, that are used, okay? The, these, you can get very fine grained if you want to, but these, these are probably the most important ones, okay? So at the top here, you have the Etsy Ansible hosts, okay? That's just a file. Uh, that's an that's a INI file, so it's key value. Uh, okay, yeah. and then um, I'll give you a okay. So essentially, the can, can I know it's hard to see, but yeah. Uh, it's a bit hard to say, but um, see, so up here is 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 a group group name. So I could say local. These are for my local machines just in, in this building, and then remote, and then you know you could put as many hosts, define as many hosts as you want under each group. Okay, so why you need that is okay. Okay, so that's that's the host file, the Etsy host file. Okay. I have a question. Can sure. Yeah, it can. It can. <clears throat> you can nest groups. You can. Is is everything is defined? Like this. This are uh, an overview, but it's people are managing. You know. You know thousands of uh, hosts, data centers. You know with, with this tool, it's it can be nested. You can nest groups and groups here. Yeah. But it supports everything. They've actually got Ansible 2.0, um, which you know is even it's even more extended. So yeah, it's it's it's, it's got a large support and active community. Yeah, I'd like to ask you the opposite question: What is the smaller setup mm -hmm. that actually warrants uh, you know the actual use of uh, Ansible? You, you you can set it up on your. I mean, really, you you can set it up just on your local computer, on your laptop, because and set it up using cron jobs, okay? Yeah. Yeah. You won't have just the one machine you want to manage. Yes. But you we, might have, we have servers. Yeah. But mm. you say yeah. you had yeah. just the one you want to manage, but, yeah. you still, but you want to manage it in a reproducible manner. Yeah, that's right. So so yeah, to, consistent. Say, for instance, you might want to manage this one machine, mm. but when something goes wrong with that machine, you want to be able to Set it back up. That's right. Than like, yes. Yeah, that's right. And um, uh, another great thing, you know, it's used as a configuration management tool. So, you know, in files, you know, you have um, uh, you you have files, and you could um define like variables. So each hosts um. Yeah. I have yeah. The idea. Thank you. But no, I'll, just, I'll just show you this. Uh, no, it is, it's important for the point of. Um, so, how it, how, how it um, automates configuration management is so you've got a configuration file. You know, this, they're not really, they're more, usually more passable than this, but you can have this host, so you can deploy 100 hosts, but obviously, Maybe, you know, it's like an Excel spreadsheet, you know, when you drag and they go increment by one. What Ansible allows is to define a variable on, on that uh, configuration file. So you want to deploy a 100 hosts, a 1,000 hosts, a million hosts with this configuration. That's, you know, it just it changes the variable. You can define variables. So that's, that's a configuration management, yeah? 
Okay. Um, okay. Don't you have a sure hands of who uses it in this group? I'm not sure, yeah. Answer is, yeah. And is it um, followed a lot? Like yeah, very. In Sydney, is there a yeah. music group? Yeah, I'd say there would be. Mm. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's a direct competitor to a puppet or a chef. Or yeah. A three big names, so yeah, that's right. Oh, some I see. Some people people some people yeah. yeah, but yeah. Automation tools. So. Yeah. But you know, pu puppet, you, you got to pay licensing. You know, it's. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. It's. Uh, they, they do have. I mean, there is a uh, commercial offering, but they, they have open source too, but. Chef, I believe, or puppet. I know you got to pay licensing fees once you, you know, pass a certain threshold. Ansible is not required. They do have Ansible Tower, which is essentially a GUI, uh, a graphical user in interface. But other than that, it's totally free because they don't want to make it free because all it's doing is doing SSH commands. You know, someone could fork it. <laughs> but um, yeah, okay. So the the main configuration files are Etsy, Etsy Ansible host, or you could. You could define what host you use. That defines a host you want to use. Okay, a host you want to target. Um, and the, these are the. This is the default module directory. Now, I'll show you, modules uh, in Ansible are um, are, are like the 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 bits of code written in Python that accomplish certain tasks. Okay, so you can have an apt module that installs packages you can have uh, a, a module for memory management that checks the loads of, of your host you can have um you know uh, think of any task you want done it's yeah function that you want to yeah it's, it's, it's essentially a function okay it's written in python it's oh oh yeah for sure <laughs> yeah that's right yeah but yeah but you could write your own. Yeah, yeah that's right. So you might use the fact that other people provide modules just saves you the trouble. So if someone's yeah. already got a module for managing your database or something like that, just use theirs. So that's probably all the basics are provided. Oh, everything. Even even more advanced. So here's the modules that come built in. Mm. Oh, for sure. That's 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 all I do, you know. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, see, here's a, here's the build. It comes with built-in modules. You can obviously add your custom modules, but you know, there's, there's a module in here for uh, setting up SSH. Uh, you know, so you don't have to use a password. You have to use public key authentication. So, sorry, just to, so let's say I have an app, mm -hmm. actually a website, mm -hmm. sitting on nginx or something. Sure. Let's go to an app. Yep. Um, if it's a Python application, mm -hmm. that's what I'm using. No, no, no. All, all it, all it does, all the only, the role of Python in Ansible is that's what it uses to execute the command. So you can call .NET, you can call PowerShell. It, it's not using Python uh, directly. So, so if I was to do something similar, mm -hmm. uh, I'm JS background, right? Yeah. I, I write an app in something or the other, and mm -hmm. probably use Docker additionally. Yeah, that's right. Yep. That's going to be my clonable yep. production machine. Yep. Yeah. So I, I see that you have something that says Docker. There. Yeah. Yeah. How, like, like, I don't understand how you put these two together because I get that we're trying to replicate okay. Python modules on Ubuntu. So, so, so you might run, say, for instance, you might run an Ansible script to uh, get, get Docker on 100 machines, to all the stuff, download it, start the same. Okay, Docker. Okay. So the assumption is I have my own data center and a box, and I'm using Ansible to put stuff on it. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Well, you know, usually it's it's, it's not necessary, but usually you have one host with Ansible defined uh, installed on it, and then um, you, you know use that as your management management machine, and then the rest you just manage. So here, here's a, an example of how Docker, you know, the Docker module. Um, 
yeah, so Docker has got cap, it's got all these options. All of this is YAML file. So think JSON, you know, and then key value, key value for arguments. Okay. Um, here's a few. These are examples of what the file YAML file would look like. Now, so you've got modules, and then another big uh, thing in in uh, Ansible are, are playbooks. All right. So playbooks are where where you put implement the logic. So you, you can call this module, and then you can call that module. You can it's, it's, it's essentially a script. Okay. So playbooks are, are are where you you know say I want this to happen, and then if this happens, I want that to happen, and then restart the machine. Okay, so th that's a playbook. Playbook is just uh, a script. Okay, where, where you call modules. Now you've seen all the built-in um, modules here. It comes built in, and yeah. So they're written in Python two, actually Python two dot x. So. <clears throat> okay, let me just drag that away. Okay, so it's a, it's a well-defined system. Um, You'll see it. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I was saying uh, playbooks. Uh, playbooks are made up of modules. Okay. So you call modules. So this is this is, is an example. Uh, you know, playbook, Ansible playbook. So it's written in YAML. Um, YAML is similar to JSON. You know, you Google JSON and there's plenty of explanations. But so. This is just a name, you know, essentially a comment. My first playbook. See, here you define hosts. So I could, you could define host all, that means every every defined host, or you can define a group, okay? Now, this is a user, and this is a, do you need it to become pseudo, like super user? You can, uh, you can uh, define what uh, connection you want to use. So there's three types of connections in um, Ansible. There's, you can use local, which means it's performing on the local machine. You can use parameter, which is a Python framework sort of to scrape and manipulate SSH. But yeah, and this is SSH, so it's free. SSH is the most efficient. Now go the facts. Okay, yes. Yeah, and another great thing about Ansible is when you, when you uh, execute a playbook or a module on a, on a remote host, it gathers all facts on the machine. Okay, so if I can just get a quick example here. Actually, let me, let me try and do it here. Okay, let me do a live, live demo here, guys. So Ansible, Ansible all, M for module, I'm going to do setup. Setup is a module that's usually run, OK? OK, so I'll type that command in. Uh, actually, let's pipe that to less. That's right. Every host, well, you can, you, you, you can filter. So if you want, that's because I define all. That's going to go to every host and gather facts. Yeah. Now, gather facts. It's all useful bits of information. Gives you the IP address, um, what type of Linux or host operating system, you know, the date, uh, IP, you know, network details, gateways, uh, yeah, everything. You know, block storage. What, what, you know, how many block, uh, how many devices, like the storage device it, it has on it. If they're, if they're removable or not. Example here, mm -hmm. all is, consists of just your local machine. No. Nah, because what, I saw that the heading. Yeah, that, 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 is, that is one. So I've got basically in this test, live demo, I've got one one host defined as my local laptop, and I've got another host defined as a, another server I manage. Right. Okay. So further down there, that's Should be. Stuff. Yeah. So you've got all of that. And that's then. JSON. Yeah, it's, 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 it comes back in JSON. Which is very easy to uh, manipulate. Okay, hopefully. There's the next. Hopefully, there's, there's no there's private there. keys on there. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm just looking for the next host. Is there a limit to the size of the ML file? No, no, no. There's no, there's no limits per se. I mean, it's only. Uh, 
Yeah, it's, it, it's just not not dependent on YAML, as it, it depends on the traffic you want to generate. You know, but you, you, you can do it concurrently. There are ways to address that. So, sorry, I guess, okay. Um, so, so, see this? When you did the yeah, so that's, that's, that's a module. module. Yeah, and the module. that's right. The module all that's right. But the thing is, that's I, I call that um, setup module explicitly when usually when, when you perform Ansible command, it usually does that automatically. Yeah, it does that by default. And, uh, you know, to gather facts, it's called gathering facts. Yeah. OK, so, yeah. You can see I've got the, one one. There's, see, this is, yeah, this is the remote host. See, the local one's Lubuntu, this is Ubuntu, okay? Now, there's all sorts of modules. You can manage Amazon uh, instances, Digital Ocean, okay? So, yeah, lots of great information. You, you could even get this information, pipe it into something else to, you know, perform another operation, okay? So, so basically, yeah, like a playbook that gathers this information yeah. and then decides based on this information that's right. that on this server I'm going to run this command. That's right. Server, that's right. Yeah, you can, you can apply logic like that depending on uh, what feedback you get, you know. Okay, so yeah, that's, that's showing, uh, it's called gathering facts in the Ansible nomenclature. You know, so that's the facts that's get, being gathered from two hosts. Nah, so it... Essentially, before, sorry, excuse me one second. If we go, actually, I have to drag this out of the way. It's it's redirecting the output. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So yeah, what happens is this is the local host. You, you tell you know the commands to be executed. Uses SSH as a transform mechanism. It goes to these hosts. It, uh, you know, executes the command. The output comes back through the SSH pipe and then gets displayed on your local host. Okay, it, it does cache those values too, okay? Yep. Sorry? If you go back to the slide. Yeah. Now you mean the terminal? Yeah, terminal. Where, where, where I ran the module, the, yeah. the demonstration. Yeah. So this is all Ansible command that you can run on the Yeah, no. So this performs, it performs different commands to get that, to get that information. So LS to, you know, this file, DF to get, you know, the blocks. Uh, you know, free, it executes whatever command, and then that, you know, it passes it into JSON and then brings it back. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, it's executing a number of commands. And this is cache, so you don't have to do it every time, but yeah, it does it automatically, usually when you're discovering hosts. Okay. Um, I, I, I dare say it's passed on the local machine. So it gets the raw data and then passes it into JSON format. Yeah. Okay. So I can ask a question. So we had a situation at work the other day where we realized that we were able to use Slack as a performance improver mm -hmm. for the speed at which pages were rendering sure. and operations were happening within the library management system. Yep. That's what I want. So what happened now is that we have you know a number of servers mm -hmm. of which we have a number of clients and their and their systems. The beauty would be for us as the owner of the business mm -hmm. to actually be able to say, this operation needs to be repeated in this and this and this and this yeah. server, but not in this one. So at yeah. the moment it's quite lengthy and yeah. you know, expensive yeah. to do. So I'm intrigued because yeah, well, I want to know how deep into a relational database can influence this goal. Oh, you can query. You can write it. There's modules that actually query databases. Every Anything you can define. Yeah. So it's in your list of Yeah. So you could say, uh, these are all my database mm -hmm. these are all That's my right. 
web servers. These are all my uh, some other yeah. libraries. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So and then you can just say I want to run that command on just the library computer. Yeah. Just That's library right. Now, if you've got a, a couple of hosts that you manage and you're doing repeatable tasks, once you learn how to do this, you do it once and that's it. And then it, it does it automatically. And then it sends you an alert. You know, it's... it's, it's so you have to actually understand the yeah. step that's... Oh, definitely. You have to, you know, you can't go and uh, deploy it tonight. You know, you have to read some documentation, but it is simple. You know, once you get the mechanics. Yes, sir. Yeah, no, not Ansible. Ansible can't send you alerts. Not yours. Yeah, you know, I'm saying as part of a, a part of a system. You know, yeah. So because it's agentless, mm -hmm. right, could I could I do something like blah module on so and so server is showing I have extra load? Right? You can. You and can. Or go away and spin up another dyno off whatever. Like scale. Yeah. 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 So can I tell you to do that? Or well, not actually. So I, when you're saying um like with the load so you can tell ansible like do a cron job so every 10 minutes check the load right. and then do this but that's not the scalable version you know so yeah you well you, you want something specifically for monitoring so nagios is good just for you know but if you're using containers you know they've got they've got the prometheus yeah yeah, no, no, yeah. It's, it's, but yeah it yeah 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 yeah, well, it, yeah, you, you, you know, it, this, it, this is a piece of the, this is a tool, another tool in your tool belt. So you can use it with other, you know, call it easily, okay? It's very powerful, guys. You need to get on it. <laughs> guys and girls. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Deploy Nangios. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Every, everything, anything you can imagine that you type in at the terminal or whatever or manage, there's a module for it. So you, you don't have to repeat it. You write, you write the playbook once, and that's it. You set it in cron job or whatever, and you, you know that, that's deployed. You know, so these days. You know, one sysadmin should really, you know, can, can manage up to hundreds of hosts easily. Okay, so that, that, that's the power. I mean, it's not, you know, that's the way we're heading, you know, about, you know, okay. So let me just see how we've got, how we're doing on time, Rob. Uh, quite tight. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, has ever, everyone got a good idea of how it works? Okay, no, I encourage you. It's, um, I had it written. Sorry, excuse me one second. I guess I'd, I'd like to um, uh, How many more slides have you got to go? No, I can wrap up. I just wanted to, so it's it's pretty much been acquired by uh, Red Hat's backing it. So it's, so it's sort of like a, a Red Hat uh, project. You know, it's going to be around for a while. Um, you know, it's simple. What You know, there's only a few concepts that you need to understand. Um, and yeah, it's originally written by Matthew De House, and um, yeah, it's it's. Uh, I encourage everyone to explore explore it. You know, get into it because it really, you know, it, it really increases efficiency and productivity in <clears throat> for the management. You know, as as our dependence on uh, technology grows. You know, it's, 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 a, it's a cool open source tool that we can stick in our tool belt and, you know, increase pro productivity. Yeah. So um, anyone got any questions before I leave? What yes, sir. Are you using? Version. Version. So that, that's a good question because uh, they've got Ansible 2 now. So one, one of the common gotchas with um, Ansible uh, is all the modules are written in Python 2, 2.x. So you can't. Is two, three is not supported, a, even in Ansible 2, you know, because it's too much, uh, you know, just uh, you have to refactor a lot of, yeah, too many changes. Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> they've got Ansible 2, which implements new features, you know, such as, you know, like co concurrency, more logic, you know, I mean, yeah, the Ansible 2 is just 
big, a bigger and better version. You know, more features and um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so are you still calling one? Here I've been using Ansible too, only because I just installed it from the normal Reaper. You can install it. Uh, that's a you can install it via you know apt or yum. You can install it via the Python you know pip packet manager too. You can install it you know as a tarball you know compiler. Okay, so very easy to get your hands on. Not much dependencies, but yeah, uh, yeah. So um, yeah. Any questions? I'll I'll be. Uh, you know, I'll be around after, you know, if, you, if you're curious. Okay, so thanks. Thanks for bearing with me. Uh, yeah. So as we were saying at the beginning of the, uh, the session, uh, we usually go to the pub after this, uh, usually Piermont, Piermont Bridge Hotel, which is just by across the road from Piermont Bridge. Um, as we also said earlier, I'm looking to give up some of my responsibilities here. Uh, so all we're really looking for is someone or people to help out looking for talks and maybe publishing them on the uh, Meetup page and the Google Plus page. Uh, if anybody's <coughs> interested in doing some of that, please come talk to me or Tim. Uh, and uh, thank you for coming. <laughs>